Hello aviators! Today we have a video about a plane that has climbed into the sky and stormed into our channel swiftly and smoothly. On October 19, 2017, the new A330neo airliner made its maiden flight. In this regard, I have decided to figure out what kind of bird it is. Let's take a look. Airbus A330neo is a twin-engine, wide-body airliner developed by the Airbus concern from the basic A330 aircraft in mid-2010s. NEO, as usual for Airbus, stands for New Engine Option. It's funny, usually when I'm talking about the period of development, I mean distant nostalgic times of the past, but now it was literally last week. In fact, the A330neo is a new generation of A330 class, with a lot of innovations. First of all, of course, it's the new engines. The history of this project began in the not-so-distant 2004, when Boeing announced the new 7E7 program. The task of this work was the development of a brand new long-haul airliner. The task is now reached. Voila! Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Of course, a new aircraft became a problem for Airbus. In order not to lose the market, the Europeans started to create an improved version of the A330, a direct competitor of the American plane. But after some time, it became clear that this work would not overcome the challenge. Dreamliner was still more effective. As we know, Airbus had to choose the other way and start the creation of an entirely new airliner. The task is now reached. Voila! Airbus A350XWB. XWB. How could they come up with such a name? Temporarily, the A330 had been forgotten. But then the NEO program appeared. In 2010, Airbus started a modernization of their most popular product. The narrowbody A320. During the A320neo development, some calculations showed that such work with a small project cost can significantly improve the aircraft performance. People thought, if that work was so efficient for A320, they can do the same for A330. Of course, anyone can have a question. Well, you've tuned the A330. It's 2017. The sky is under the reign of the super-advanced Boeing 787 and Airbus 350. Okay, the A350 is not a competitor. It is higher on the Airbus model line and occupies another part of the market. Probably that's why Airbus refused to create a small A350-800 version. It would be a competitor to our today's hero. But Boeing 787 models 8 and 9 can be considered direct vis-a-vis. -vis. Whatever you do with an old plane, it cannot be better than a new plane. On one hand, yes. But the new planes have a feature. They are focused on a long-haul flights for long distances. Very long distances. The Model 9 flies over 14,000 kilometers. The fact is that these models are optimized for such distances, and if they, let's say, fly on a shorter routes, most of the advantages are quietly lost. The fact is that these models are optimized for such distances, and if they, let's say, fly on a shorter routes, most of these advantages are quietly lost. On maximum distance routes, A330neo has a lower performance than Dreamliners. But on the shorter ones, it can compete with it. In addition, A330 is a bit cheaper, and customers will be able to get it faster. There is a huge queue for 787. That, of course, is awesome for Boeing, but not so awesome for customers, even considering that Boeing produces over a hundred Dreamliners every year. Yes, yes, and each of them cost over 250 million dollars. Modernization had also been made cheaper. Nearly 95% of the aircraft elements is inherited from the basic A330. Most of the new technology has already been created during the A350 project. And some of the development work is realized jointly with a new A380 Plus airliner, which was shown at the Paris Air Show this summer and which supplies will start in 2020. In 2014, at the Farnborough Air Show, Airbus officially announced the A330neo. 
Aircraft's new power plant is the Rolls-Royce Trent 7000. These engines are an evolution of the Trent 1000 family. Developed for Boeing 787 with some of the A350 engine's innovations. The diameter of the air intake had risen approximately from 97 inches to 112 inches. The thrust of the engines will increase in significantly and will take the interval of 300 to 320 kilonewtons each. Initially it was assumed that the aircraft will have an option to choose between two engines, from Rolls-Royce and from General Electric. However, Rolls-Royce offered special conditions for Airbus for the right of exclusive deliveries. In addition, Airbus saved a lot of money refusing to adapt aircraft for two different engine models. As a result, now we have the Trent 7000 as the only engine for the A330neo. This practice is not unique nowadays. A similar point arose with Boeing when they chose the new power plant for the model 777X. And that time General Electric was chosen as an exclusive supplier with its GE9X. According to calculations, fuel consumption per one passenger seat will be reduced by 12 to 15 percent, plus 2 percent with installing the new wingtips, 3.7 meter length shocklets. At the same time, airliner's design optimization will reduce maintenance costs. The A330neo's cabin had also been significantly modernized. Airbus adopted its Spaceflex interior configuration, which made a cabin more comfortable and roomy. The elements of this configuration are already applied on other new Airbus planes. Cabin optimization will add 6 seats on 800 version and 10 seats on 900 version. The cockpit will receive new equipment, which will unify it with the A350 cockpit. Totally, the development program and production preparations will cost nearly 2 billion euros. During the life cycle of the project, the concern plans to sell about 1000 planes. Airbus is aiming at a medium distance, high dense passenger route market. Part of it is occupied by aging Boeing 767 and Airbus A330 airliners. The first A330-900neo assembly began in Toulouse in 2016. The aircraft had already been painted, but the Trent 7000 engines were received only six months later. The engines became a cause of some shifts in production plans. As planned, a starting customer, the Portuguese TAP Portugal, will receive the first aircraft in the third quarter of 2018. Finally, the first plane made its maiden flight on October 19, 2017. It's assumed that the test program will include three prototype flights for totally 1400 hours and will finish in mid-2018 by receiving the EASA certificate. So what options does Airbus offer? Generation NEO assumes the creation of two airliners, A330-800 and A330-900. These planes will receive fuselages, the lengths of which will be the same as the old 200 and 300 models. Model 800 will be able to accommodate 257 passengers in two-class configuration, cabin limit 406 people, and fly to a distance of 13,900 kilometers, while Model 900 will accommodate 287 passengers at the limit of 440 people and take them to a distance of 12,130 kilometers. Model 900's fuselage is almost 5 meters longer than the younger version. At the same time, in order to improve flight stability of the shorter 800 plane, its vertical tail was made 60 centimeters higher. At the moment of the first flight, the A330neo had orders for 212 planes for 11 airlines and financial companies. The largest order came from the Malaysian low-cost AirAsia X, targeted on a long-haul budget flights. The Malaysians ordered 66 aircrafts. The second largest future customer is Iran Air, 28 planes. Interesting fact, most of the customers have ordered A330-900. Model 800 has only been ordered by Hawaii Airlines, 6 planes. Probably the reason for this is the main advantage of the new aircraft large capacity and efficiency at short distances. 
Model 900 uses this advantage fully. But now Neo just learns to fly and very soon will be on the routes. Fast flights and soft landings to it. And to you too, by the way. Be sure to subscribe to watch more about aviation. Good luck!